The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. Hi everybody and welcome once again to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're at Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, the uh, second show of the brand new season. Last week, uh, Joe Willette managed to get his first win ever here on Stars and Strikes and today he'll be trying to make it two in a row. I make it two in a row and I'm sure he's going to need a, a little bigger score than he had last week and I think he knows it too. At 3.30, uh, um, he's fortunate to be back really. Uh, the scoring at Park Place Lane is usually a lot higher than that. All right, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, the guy returning from last week after posting his first victory from Ashburnham, Massachusetts, Joe Willette. Okay, and Joe comes in averaging 125, a 208 for a high single, 471 for a triple, and last week's score 333 to 320 to defeat, defeat Ken Davis. So Joe's record here now on Stars and Strikes is an even 1-1, one and, one, and the guy he's bowling today also has a record of 1-1 one one here on the program. He was with us a couple of seasons ago. Dave Richards from Derry, New Hampshire. Okay, Dave comes in averaging 124, high single 191, 468 for high triple. So both bowlers' individual stats very, very close. Our bonus ball contest will be up to $90 at the end of this week's show. We hope you have your postcards in here, and we'll try and give away some money at the end of the program. Don't forget, right after our show here this afternoon, Stars and Strikes doubles at 1 o'clock here on the Winds. But first, we've got singles competition the second week of our series. It'll be Dave Richards against Joe Willette right after these words. Don't go away. Last week we began the new season here on Stars and Strikes. In case you missed it, Joe Willette with a 13-pin victory over Kevin Davis. So he'll try and make it two in a row this week over Dave Richards. The winner of this one will move on to face Bob Kaliri. And in two weeks, the lefty Peter Flynn will be here to try and defend that number one spot. But Joe Willette is set to get us started on lane 32. <laughs> week number two. Sure, Joe wants to get a quicker start than he had last week. As we mentioned, the opening of the show, the 330, uh, it's probably not the lowest winning score, but it has to be one of them. Expect a little higher score today. Seven for Joe. Joe had eight marks last week, including three strikes, and the biggest one was in the ninth box of the third game, which helped him cinch up that victory over Kevin Davis. The runner-up in today's match, of course, will receive a check for $175. Those two pins will not count. Ball leaving the lane before it hit the wood. And that's going to be a eight. So it's 15 after two for Joe Willette and Dave Richards steps up for his first turn. Well, interesting leave, two, six, 10, piece of wood next to the two. He's gonna try to pinch the two pin in the wood. Wood could come off the wall, but he's really trying to cut the two pin over. Not quite. Good try. So I started to mention the runner-up of this match will receive a $175 check and the runner-up plaque. The fourth place plaque to be exact. And the winner moves on to face Bob Kaleri next week. And how about that? A chop out of the two pin by Dave Richards. I was just in a roll off yesterday with uh, Dave Richards. Oh, what a recovery for a spare. Uh, I was kidding him. He had some wild pants on yesterday, <laughs> like like zebra or something. I was waiting for him to walk in today. I call him the fashion guru of candlepin <laughs> bowling. <laughs> but he's uh, dressed conservatively today. Joe Willette looking for his first mark, staring down the one, three, and seven with wood, and he catches it on the inside but doesn't carry the three. Excellent try. Just a way to do it. Don't
don't forget, at 1 o'clock, right after we finish here, stars and strikes doubles here on the wins. Everything but the four pin for Joe Willette. We hope you enjoyed uh, the premiere of the new show last week. It'll be every Sunday now, two hours of bowling here on Star on uh, the wins. Stars and strikes at noon. Stars and strikes doubles at one. Dave Richards going to fill the mark up in the second. Dave relies on the ball to break a lot from right to left too, so he's going to have to make the adjustment. Ball sliding a lot on the lane. Nice recovery there. Everything but the seven, and he's trying to coax the wood to go down and knock the seven out of there. It's not going to happen. Ten for Dave. And a nine pin lead, but he's opposite a mark here in the fourth. Dave was here. last December. Not as long ago as I thought. First week, he beat Jack Sanek. And then the next week, he faced Bob Kelly and lost by one pin as Bob Kelly came up for his final time and needed a spare six to win in the 10th, and that's exactly what he got. I asked uh, Dave before the match if he remembered that one. He said, oh yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and seven pin drop for Joe. One, three, six left. Trying to make it two marks in a row. I get the feeling that Joe is very happy that that first win is out of the way. He was uh, a little anxious, I think, going into last week's show and wanted very much to uh, atone for his loss the first time here. And although he was certainly disappointed with the score, he was happy to get the win. good pocket hit that time, but he just, leaves the two and the ten. It just doesn't seem that he's carrying that extra pin, and the ball looks like he's in the pocket pretty well. If he continues to do this, uh, you probably see a string of marks by Joe. The two and the ten, and not much to help. He's going to have to do it all on his own, cut the two pin over. Yes! Oh, oh wow! That is a great shot. It wasn't even slow either. Watch this. Just like they were tied together. Wow. Great shot by Joe. You know, a lot of times you make a shot, a tough one like that, then you start getting the extra pin. Well, Dave's got a couple pins rocking, but the six and the 10 will stay, at least for now. Dave Richards had a 682 in the roll off to finish third and he just missed that spare on the six pin. He was full on the three pin and the wood swung around and knocked out the 10 but never touched the six. 10 box for Dave. By the way, in case you did not hear us mention it last week, a new twist here on Stars and Strikes this season, the roll offs for the singles show, Stars and Strikes, open now to men and women. So the top five finishers, regardless of whether they are men or women, will qualify for the show. We'll still, of course, be doing our uh, mixed doubles series a little bit later on here on Stars and Strikes. And on the Stars and Strikes doubles program, we'll be having a four-week series of women's doubles also midway in the season. So lots happening. We'll be keeping you up to date here on the wins. Disappointing four fill on that great spear by Joe. We should have the degree of difficulty in the spares, and they should get extra pins <laughs> automatically. Good 10. Talking about the roll-off scores, Dave Richards had a 682 to finish third. You saw them earlier. Uh, Joe Willette had a 660 to finish in that fifth and final spot just missing out qualifying for the television series here on Stars and Strikes. Jack Sanek and Jack Ray were tied for sixth at 6.53, so just missing out by seven pins. Joe tried to slide the piece of wood next to the two pin across. 
Oh boy, this time he slips through the middle and disappointing six box, so 82 through eight. Dave Richards working on a spare, hoping to grab the lead. Anything over six, he'll have the lead. Big ball in the pocket. That's over six. <laughs> Way over six. Interesting leave. Uh, he's going to have to play the wood out in front, and it's half in the channel and half out. As long as he hits it on the lane, that's, that's good. Made it look easy. Thought it might have snapped away from him. And the seven pin. Light hit, five fill. I want to comment on, on the two pins that we didn't give Joe Ouellette back in, I believe, the second frame. And three in a row for Dave Richards. A lot of people are confused with that ruling. Um, I, I meet it all the time. Um, someone would around and say, those pins are good. The ball never touched the gutter or the channel. Mm -hmm. well, that's not the ruling. The ruling is, as soon as the ball leaves the lane, Without hitting a fair piece of wood, the ball is dead. So with the speed of the ball, if you think about it, common sense would tell you the speed of the ball, the ball is very seldom going to drop down into the channel. It'll probably hit the sidewall first. But in Joe's case, the ball did leave the lane before it came in contact with that piece of wood. Well, Joe looking to bounce back here in the tenth and get a markup on the board, or maybe two. And he again, fails to get out of the chute here in this first game. Um, through no fault of his own, I think. He hasn't had a lot to shoot at. Made a great spare back in the sixth. He's jeopardy of being under the century mark. Just no, missing. it won't come back. He's missing the head pin. Needs this for an even hundred. Converts that to an even 100 game. Opening string. Dave Richards got a lead of 12, and he can pad it here. Working on a spare, and he has two open frames. Well, he's like to Eight. see that seven pin get out of there. And looks like maybe Mrs. Riley's duck soup here. Just hit the wood, and he'll drive it straight back. Yes. Four in a row for Dave Richards. Just catching the head pin, and look at the action, a strike. Wow, he just barely nipped the head pin on the right-hand side, and he takes them all out. Maybe he's found the secret. Just barely touch the head pin, keep the pins in play, and as long as they're moving around, especially at the park place lanes, you have a chance to get a lot of scoring. And that's just exactly what happened. 132 plus these two balls. So he's going to have a great opening game, and Joe's going to have some work to do. Six fill, 138 for Dave Richards and the big lead after the first game. We'll be back with the bonus ball contest and more of our match between Dave Richards and Joe Willett in a minute. Well, a 38 pin cushion for Dave Richards. But a long ways to go. And right through the center on that lead. Boy, Dave took a second look at that one. He couldn't believe it. He took out the one, the two, the three, the four, and the six. No, no, he didn't either. What a stride of one, two, and three. I don't know. What do you have left? Boy, the, the four, six, seven, ten. Now, normally, if you see that leave every once in a while, and if that had been a spare leave, it would have been spectacular. But nobody will remember that now because the five pin was there. But that was still a great shot. One, two, three, eight, nine. That's what he took out of there in the first ball. Nice break there for Dave, leaving the triangle. Triangle of the three, the five, and the six, but now he's not going to like this wood. Now, the further left it goes, the better. Otherwise, he would have trouble with the five pin. Yes, sir. That is the seventh mark already in this match for Dave Richards. Dave can throw him. He gets in a streak. He can throw the scores. Right now, he's throwing a good ball. 
Joe Willette looking to just try and get something started. Perhaps he can take advantage of this with the wood. He's got the two, the five, and the nine, and they're bunched because the five pin has moved over a little bit. Ugh, boy. Sliding back to the right. Caught the wood instead of driving the three pin straight back. And Still having a little trouble with his footing on the approach. Better delivery that time. Get it in the pocket, but again, not much to show for it. It's very important to get the first step under you. If you get the first step down, your second and third steps, you're usually sliding a little bit anyways. You want a little, a little less resistance there, but that first step is crucial to get yourself off on a good approach. Opens up with a 19 pair. And Dave Richards is working on a mark again. Finished the first game with five in a row. Right back in the pocket. Solid eight pin drop, the five and the eight left. And again, a nice piece of wood in front. I think, Doug, you can make five out of 10 of those. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Two in a row again, and it's starting another streak for himself. Here you see the replay of the five and the eight. And this time he's way off to the right. Disappointing three. He turned around Lost as soon as that he, one, yep. Yeah, as soon as he threw it, he turned around. Undoubtedly, you've noticed at home already that Dave uses those rather unique-looking all-white bowling balls. Kind of a camouflage as they go down yeah. <laughs> into the pin deck. He figures the pins won't see them coming as easily. <laughs> and knock a few extra ones down. Joe Willette right on the head pin again, and even still he can't buy an extra pin. It's the two and the five. Uh, I don't like to harp on this too much, but last week and this week, he doesn't seem to me... There's a good example of what I'm going to about to say. He doesn't seem like he's bowling that bad to see the scores as low as they are. Uh, last week, I can remember a couple shots like this. He hit the object pin on a two-pin spare and jumped out the front one. He just did the same thing. Yep. Joe Willett is from Ashburnham, Mass., which is in the Fitchburg area. Joe does a lot of his bowling at the New Palace Lanes in Fitchburg. And we know we have a lot of viewers and loyal followers of Stars and Strikes down in the fitchburg Lemonster area. So. Thank you for all of your support of the program, as for everyone. Of course, I have some people to uh, mention, too, and I would you know I forgot their, the names I have written down. I met them in Toronto, Canada. And uh, I haven't forgotten you. They're from the Nashua area. I just uh, I got them pinned right on my refrigerator with a magnet and everything, and I forgot I to you, bring it. I think you should tell this story uh, after we come back. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, uh, Dan will entertain you with stories of his travels from this summer. <laughs> And we'll come back with more on Stars and Strikes in just a minute. Dave Richards has a big lead. 50 pins to be exact here in the midway point. As he has been able to string some marks together. This time he'll have to show us a shot. Dan, I think it would be interesting if you went on to tell this story about Toronto oh, this summer because yes. I thought that was pretty fascinating. And the power of television, you know. <laughs> I was uh, in Toronto at the beautiful Sky Dome to see the Red Sox play the Toronto Blue Jays. And that was I, back when they were still in the race. Uh, right, yeah. and uh, they had swept the Toronto Blue Jays that day, so I was there for three out of the four games. One of the days we were outside the ballpark and just walking around, some family members and some friends of mine. And, uh, I heard the name, hey, Murphy. <laughs> I got a little scared because I was in Toronto, and I'm saying, uh-oh, my past may be catching up with me. <laughs> and uh, this fellow uh, said, you are the one that does the Candlepin Stars and Strikes with Doug Brown. I says, yes, I am. And they were up there. They're from Nashua. There was, there was a family of four. They were up there for one of the games. And uh, just happened to walk by them, and they recognized me from the show. So I have their names at home, and we'll mention them one of these days. I haven't forgotten you. 
But uh, small world sometimes, all the way to Toronto, Canada. But uh, any of you that want to go to a nice ballpark, it's just an incredible place. Well, it's something we haven't really mentioned much, but the Sky Dome Hotel is the official hotel of uh, Candlebin Star Trek. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spare for Joe Willette in the fifth. Looking for the big fill and he gets it with eight. I think we should do that. Tape a show and then do the narration from the Skydome Hotel afterwards. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just sliding by. That is a, a spectacular place, all kidding aside. Really uh, if you've never had a chance to go up there, <laughs> it really is worth the trip. <laughs> with all... Uh, Apologies to Fenway Park that I've always thought is the most beautiful park in baseball, but uh, uh, this place is just something a little special. Really uh, kind of blew my mind when they were washing the sidewalks down the next morning. <laughs> <It> kind of <laughs> big machines out there, and yeah. they do it right. Dave sliding by. Dave has a four box drought going here. That's as long as he's had the entire match. And now a spread eagle. Dave and his wife Beth live in Derry, New Hampshire. Dave works at MVP Sports in Andover at their distribution center. Does a lot of his bowling at the Melrose Bowl. Nice 10 after the spread eagle start. I, I, I probably should met, I met another person up there. I better mention him, too. And I haven't got his name, but I get his name at home, too, because he's a retired state trooper. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> from Somerville or out that area. So uh, I'll mention him in the weeks to come, too. So I haven't forgot you, honest. Don't tell your friends and, <laughs> and pull me over. <laughs> Joe Willett looking to capitalize on Dave's opens and can't. Looks like he might have had an opportunity to slide that over, but it just didn't work. Nine box. And he really has got to almost mark out here and hope Dave doesn't put any marks up. He's got to cut that lead down at least in the 20s to have a real legitimate shot this last game. I mean, anything can happen, but he'd be the first to admit he wants to want to go in the last game 42 pins or 40-some pins behind. The one, the two, the four, and the 10. That's yes. Nice shot. He can make them. Just a matter of him putting them some together. Fourth mark for Joe. All spares. Dave Richards had a slew of them in the first game, but he's cooled off a bit here in the second. Yeah, three six, piece of wood next to the three. Oh, he's too high. Mm. He threw his hands up. He knew. Ball just kind of hung, straightened right out on him instead of breaking from right to left. That's the one. A little extra body English when the ball hit those two. <laughs> He's kind of mad at himself, I think, for not covering that spare. Dave has kind of an interesting little quirk in his delivery, Dan. He rocks backward on that left foot before he starts his forward motion. Not a good habit to get into. <laughs> but again, as I mentioned, um, Kevin Davis's uh, ball grip last week. Sometimes the bowlers who have a little bit of that bowling talent, uh, they can get away with a little quirks in their delivery that I would, if I was teaching someone, uh, a beginning bowler, would try not to do anything like that because the more movement you have by the time you deliver the ball, more chance for a timing error. Well, there are all kinds of those little interesting little quirks as Dave Richards fills with a seven for a 115. The one that comes to mind right away uh, always is Scott Richardson, who bowls off the right foot. He's a right-handed bowler and bowler and slides with his right foot. Yeah, you should just uh, kind of be yourself, really. You see it a lot in baseball with little kids trying to emulate uh, some right. of the professional ball players. Well, you see you do that in bowling. Just be comfortable and do go at the game at your own ability and your own style and work on it from there. Ooh, he wanted to catch some of that wood, I'm sure, and he just barely missed it. That would have been a big mark for him. Well, he's going to have to scramble to get a mark in the in the tenth just to keep these pins that he just cut in to that lead 
Lead down to 34, but he's opposite a spare seven. Again, Joe Willette was back, was with us back around Christmas time of 1985. He lost that match and waited almost six years before he could get back here on Stars and Strikes and got his win last week. Oh, the ball comes back and it still won't happen for him. A little late in his delivery that time. He actually let the ball go almost a little behind himself instead of getting the ball out on the lane. And it's a 112. So three extra pins added to the lead. It's 41 for Dave Richards, 253 to Joe Willett's 212. With one game to go on Stars and Strikes when we return. It's funny sometimes how things come up on the air and then we get a lot of mail about it. I remember we made a, a couple of uh, rather innocent and unplanned comments about pin setters uh, last year, and we got right. all kinds of mail from uh, from folks who had been pin setters in their youth and, and had all kinds of stories about uh, uh, tales of woe, about broken fingers and, and all that kind of thing. It was really quite fascinating to read the letters, so we really appreciate uh, the mail and your thoughts on the program. Joe Ouellette trying to make up a big deficit here in the third game, needing marks in a hurry. Wants that seven pin to go down, and it's not going to. In two weeks, I don't think Joe has had a legitimate break <laughs> <laughs> yet. Great try. Try to play the wood. You just wait for him to explode because he's throwing a good ball, but he's down eight frames to do some exploding. <laughs> He's open in the first two. And Dave Richards will step up. You know, Dave Richards is in a situation where you don't want to sit on the lead. The lead is safe. You want to go out there, attack the pins, just like you're 41 pins behind. Reminder, stay tuned after today's match for Stars and Strikes doubles at 1 o'clock here on the Winds. The two shows will be run independently as Dave can't quite convert the spare. Those bowlers who appear on Stars and Strikes, remember, are eligible to keep returning in the same season until they win a series championship and qualify for the Tournament of Champions. Then they're done. But if you win a series and qualify for the Tournament of Champions in Stars and Strikes, you're still eligible to come in and compete on the doubles program and vice versa. The uh, doubles program will run the same way. We'll have six teams qualified into the end of the season tournament of champions in the doubles format, the scotch format with two boxes for each bowler alternating through the match. Spare for Dave in the second. And so while we're talking about things and waiting for Joe to get up on the approach, don't forget sweeps week. If you're an NHCBA league bowler, week of 20 through 26 is when we run our sweeps tournament. A new innovation we put in last year, and it's one of those things that you qualify while you're bowling in your league. If you have a high single, one of the first, second, third game uh, in your league competition, you'll qualify for the tournament, and then you can let them know if they want to bowl in it at all. So it's kind of uh, putting the cart before the horse, kind of a unique situation. But it's very, very interesting and uh, a lot of fun. And uh, you scratch, score will qualify you, but then it's a 100% handicap for the semis and to the finals. And there's $2,000 of guaranteed prize money. So be watching for that, October 20 through 26. Well, Joe Willett finally carried an extra pin, and wouldn't you know, it's going to cost him an easier shot. <laughs> and this wood is way out in front of the 7 and the 8, too. So. Gonna try to drive it straight back. Would wow. you believe that? Wow. Do you believe that? That thing twisted through the seven and the eight and never touched either one of them. Wow, I've never seen that happen before. Unbelievable. And when things aren't going good, they go horribly for you. Twisted it right through the seven and the eight. Dave Work. Richards on a spare. Well, oh, no, he's got the there. nine and the ten. Yeah, he, did. he can't w worry about twisting any wood through it either. 
Spare leave every time, Dave. <laughs> It's one. Dave, as you see, with a comfortable lead. Well, Joe is going to have to start throwing some strikes, and they're going to have to be consecutive. He's trying to coax that piece of wood over next to the six pin. Going to try to cut the six pin over, and if he doesn't cut it sharp enough, he could come in contact with that wood, but he goes by on the right. Dave has 10 marks already, one strike. He really caught fire at the end of the first game. Oh, there's the cut shot as he makes the 6-7, and we will take a timeout as Dave Richards converts a very impressive 10 box, and we will take a break and come back with the rest of our match. Joe Willett and Dave Richards after this word. Well, Joe Willett has six frames remaining. Yeah, the call's out. He's going to make a run at Dave. He's got to start now. How many strikes has he thrown? Has he, he hasn't thrown a strike yet. Has he? Well, there it is. All I have to do is ask. <laughs> Joe's probably say, geez, Dan, ask a little sooner, <laughs> will you? And one, two pocket. and Finally carried the extra pin. I'm sure he's thinking double. Get up. Ooh. Sliding off to the right. Half Worcester right. Three and nine go out of there. Not something he wanted to do. It's an eight fill out of it. Dave Richards now. Made that fine cut shot. Had a chance to see the replay going into that last commercial break. The six and the seven. Watch out. The seven, eight, and the 10 all kicked out at the same instant. That was strange. He looked like, oh my goodness, he threw a pretty good ball. He's got the seven, the eight, and the 10. All of a sudden, they just go down. And there's a difference in the match. He, he was looking at the two, four, six, but he tripped the six. The day, uh, Joe cannot seem to trip that extra pin. Good spare on strike. Mark number 12 for Dave Richards. He's running away right now. Bob Kaliri gets the winner next week. Bob with a 688 to qualify as the number two seed. And then Peter Flynn was 40 pins better than that in the number one spot, 728. Those of you who've been watching Stars and Strikes over the years, you know how Peter Flynn can roll up the big scores. <laughs> He's done it many times here. Two four left for Joe. Eighth frame, final game. Trailing by 55 plus. Dave has a mark working. Spare up for Joe. I want to thank our two participating sponsors for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time. And Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Nope, not this time. Gallant try, though, by Dave Richards. And the 10. Our CompuScore system from Alden Warner in Lowell, Vermont. Thanks also to Dan La Rochelle for his computer assistance. And keeping the big scoreboard here at Park Place Lanes for the bowlers and for the fans here, Dottie Larrick. Francis Stanwood is our lob line judge. And a spare on the 7-10.
Final two for Joe Ouellette. If uh, Dave really catches fire here in the last couple of boxes, he's got a shot at a 400. But it'll take some strikes. Well, that is the first time in two weeks that Joe Willett has been able to put two marks together. You see the replay, plays the wood effectively for the four, seven, and the nine. But again, as you said, Dan, it's not because he hasn't bowled well. He really has bowled much better than his scores will show. And he'll actually have a better score this week than he had last week. But it won't be enough against Dave Richards. Chris is gonna finish with three in a row. This is what I was expecting him to do earlier on in the match, the way he was throwing the ball, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. And then when it's too late, they all seem to go. A 124 for Joe Willett and a three string total of 336. Dave Richards can roll these final two, already secure that he will be back next week to face Bob Kaliri. And another mark. He needed a 147 for a 400. I was incorrect earlier in saying he needed strikes. He needs one more mark. There's 127 in the ninth. You need this one and throw a strike on it for, for 400 even. So we will need a strike. I was right after That's all. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the four, and the seven should be a problem if he catches the head pin, but nope. he did not do that. So we have a decent score. He'll be up in the 380s. 10 for Dave Richards. Make it a 390 to 336, Dave Richards wins and moves on. And we'll talk to both bowlers and have that $90 bonus ball contest in a minute. Week number two in the books here on Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown back with Dan Murphy and uh, Joe Willett. Well, you mentioned he'd have to have a bigger score. He did, but just not, not big enough against uh, Dave Richards, who was uh, consistent as he had to be today. Yeah, not big enough, but uh, in defense of Joe, I, I thought the last two weeks he bowled much, much better than the 330 and 336 that he hit. And, uh, yeah, he's very modest, and he said he missed a few shots, but I didn't think he's carrying the extra pin at all either. We've often made the comparison to uh, to golf when sometimes you're just hitting the ball well and things aren't happening, you're not scoring, and this is pretty much a similar situation uh, here. That's right. Not to take anything away from Dave Richards. He's, he was the better bowler today, and uh, I just look over there, and he's carrying five bowling balls. He was only using two, <laughs> sometimes three. He's got five. <laughs> let's talk to both bowlers. First of all, let's bring up Joe Willett, our runner-up for our, this afternoon. Joe from Ashburnham, and uh, Joe, congratulations. Slide right in here as we'll get you on camera, and uh, $175. I know you're probably disappointed with the scores, but uh, as Dan just mentioned, it, it seemed like it was just a question of, uh, of breaks from time to time. You just couldn't seem to carry that extra pin and get a good leave going. Well, I knew last week I got lucky and won with a poor score, and I knew this week it wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do the same, and it, it was true. I didn't, couldn't win with a poor score again. Well, we hope uh, you waited a long time to come back and see us again. Uh, hopefully it won't be so long between visits this time. So uh, good luck, and uh, we hope to see you again later in the season. Thank you. All right, that's Joe Willett from Ashburnham. $175 for uh, fourth place money, and uh, also will, of course, be receiving a plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. And now Dave Richards is going to try and get us a $90 winner in our bonus ball contest. Dan is already getting ready to pull that card out. Just have to keep this all on the up and up, though. You can't pull that card out until we get the, uh, the official number. So we'll see what Dave gives us here. Through the middle for a big fill, and it will be a nine. It's not enough. It's too, too many. <laughs> I think it's going to be a seven. Yeah? Oh, oh no. Nope. You were wrong. But it's an eight, the guess for Douglas Marquis or Marquis Jr. from Stoneham, Mass. So, uh, Mr. Marquis, we will send you a... WNDS NHCBA desk pen set as a consolation prize, and that means the uh, jackpot will go up to $100 next week, and Dave Richards will be here next week. Step right in here, Dave. We'll get you on camera, and uh, well, you just had that little run going at the end of the uh, first game, and you were able to carry that through the rest of the way. Yeah, I was pretty lucky. I was getting a nice break off the head pin. I was 
hitting them light, and they were mixing pretty well. Joe was just not getting no breaks at all today. I must, it must feel good to, uh, to get that win coming back here after the last time you were here and you had that frustrating loss. Like I said earlier, I still see it in my dreams. <laughs> Well, you lost to a great bowler, and uh, of course, when you come in next week, uh, we'll have a good one ready for you. Bob Caleri is our number two seed. Yeah, he's a good bowler. I've known Bob for a while now. He's a real good bowler. Is there any? We talked a little bit about the uh, the bowling balls that you have. Those white bowling balls. Is there any special significance to that? Because you don't see those very often. Um, no, they're unique. So I just got them. That's why I'm oh, a I different see. person. Oh, I see. All right. Well, good luck, and uh, we'll be looking forward to your match next week against Bob Caleri. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. All right, Dave Richards with the win. And uh, with that, let's look at our ladder and see what's coming up. Uh, we have two weeks left in this series as we're on our way to getting our first qualifier for the Tournament of Champions, and it'll be one of those top three names you see as Dave Richards has advanced to uh, face our number two seed, Bob Caleri, next week, and then the left-hander, Peter Flynn. But, of course, all those scores uh, irrelevant at this point as now they start new. That's right, and uh, I think the rest of the way out, uh, Dave probably take his 390 again next week, but I think he's going to need all of that against Bob Clary, and of course we all know what Peter Flynn has done on the show, so there's going to be some big scores in the next couple weeks. All right, next week we will have Bob Clary and Dave Richards. We will have $100 in the bonus ball contest. We hope you'll join us here at Park Place Lanes. Don't forget, coming up in just a few minutes, Stars and Strikes doubles. Until next week here on Stars and Strikes, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, so long from Park Place Lanes.